The ongoing debate between 1x and 2x drivetrains for gravel bikes is nothing new, and I've watched dozens of videos that address the pros and cons of each. In this video, I'm going to give you my take on the issue from a quantitative perspective and give you some real data based on some calculations. I'll even show you some pretty graphs that highlight some key discoveries that I've made along the way, so hopefully you'll stick around for that. But there's no hiding the fact that this is, at its core, uh, a video about gear ratios. Yes, that's right. Gear, gear ratios. ratios. Arguably the nerdiest bike-related topic in existence. It turns out, though, that gear ratios are the key to making an educated decision on whether you ultimately choose a 1x or a 2x system for your gravel bike. Now, all of this to say, I really won't be offended if you choose to skip this one. Over the past few years, it's become clear that the vast majority of mountain bikes have adopted the 1x drivetrain. The 1x system is a simpler design with no front derailleur. It affords a bit of weight savings, and with the availability of super wide range cassettes, it gives a rider the spread of gears required to tackle steep climbs without spinning out on fast descents. Now on the other hand, proper road bikes in the year 2020 still largely run 2x drivetrains, and this trend isn't likely to go away anytime soon. Now, there has been some experimentation with 1x on road bikes, but by and large, 2x is pretty much a staple on any proper road bike. Which brings me to the gravel bike, or adventure bike, or whatever you want to call it. What is clear is that whatever this is, it's not a passing trend, and is clearly cementing itself as a new segment within the cycling industry. The modern gravel bike has clearly borrowed elements from both mountain bikes and road bikes, and represents to some degree a hybrid of the two. For mountain bikes, gravel bikes have adopted longer, lower, and slacker geometry with clearance for wide tires. From road bikes, a gravel bike adopts the general form factor, largely rigid frames with drop bars and road style controls. So naturally, there's going to be some debate over which drivetrain system is right for a gravel bike. Now, rather than try and argue which system is right, spoiler, there is no right answer, I want this video to be a clear list of pros and cons so that you can make the decision for yourself. So let's get right down to it. Quick refresher, a one by system refers simply to the fact that there's only one chain ring on the front. Now, depending on the number of cogs on the rear cassette, it can be one by 10, one by 11, or increasingly common, one by 12. It has many advantages over its 2x counterpart. First of all, it's simpler. There's no front mech, which eliminates a derailleur, a shifter, some cables, and a chain ring. Secondly, is weight savings. Because there's less hardware, it's also a lighter system, so generally you can expect to save a few hundred grams by eliminating front shifting. Now third, and this is a big one, is tire width. In many cases, the removal of the front derailleur cage allows clearance to run even wider tires if that's something on your list of priorities. And fourth is the gear range. For the most part, a one by system with a really wide range cassette can potentially have the same or nearly the same overall range as an equivalent two by system. And based on your choice of chain ring and cassette, you can gear low enough to climb just about anything or you can gear high enough to keep pace at faster speeds. So what's the downside to one by you ask? Well, in my opinion, there's really only one downside to one by on a gravel bike, and that is the jumps between the gears. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, on a two by system, the cogs on a cassette can be closer in size to one another because the front chain rings allow for a wider range of gear ratios overall. Now, with the jumps between each gear being smaller, the rider can generally find a gear that suits their preferred cadence for a given speed. Now, technically, a 2x11 drivetrain has 22 gears, although, as we'll see in just a minute, there's only really about 16 or 17 unique gear ratios. On the other hand, a 1x11 system only has 11 gears, and those 11 gears have to span essentially the same range of gear ratios as its 2x counterpart. The concern here is that a given gear on a 1x system may make you feel like you're spinning too fast but the next higher gear may leave you feeling like you're grinding at too slow a cadence, which leaves you two options. You either slow down in the low gear until a cadence feels right, or you bump up the power and put the hammer down in the bigger gear. On a two by system, it's more likely that you can find a gear that feels just right for a particular speed and cadence. And that's really it. That's the only advantage that comes from adopting a two by system over a one by system. So just how important is it to have those smaller jumps between the gears? Well, 
As with most things in life, it all depends. If you're a mountain biker who has never ridden a proper road bike before, and you're getting into gravel biking for a change of pace, you'll probably never miss the incremental jumps between gears on a 2x setup. On the other hand, if you're a pure roadie getting into gravel for the first time, the fear is that you'll miss those small precise jumps between gears, and you may feel like something's amiss on a 1x system. Now, presumably, the only way to know for sure what works for you is to try out each type of system for an extended period of time, and then decide what's right for you. Or, if, like most of us, you don't have that luxury, what I'm about to show you might provide you some insight, and it may just be the next best thing. Oh, and before we dive into the nitty gritty, if you like this type of content and you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so as it really helps out this channel. And if you have questions or comments, feel free to get involved in the discussion below. I'm usually pretty good about replying to everyone's comments. Okay, so if you're with me so far, it seems that the only real reason not to go one by boils down to the larger jumps between gears and maybe a slight reduction in the overall range. Now this is not a novel idea and several videos have come to this conclusion already, but I just wasn't quite satisfied with that being the end of the story. I mean, how much bigger are the jumps between gears exactly on a one by setup? Is the increase in gear jumps spread uniformly across all the range of gears? And at the end of the day, will I actually miss the two by system if I decide to take the plunge and go one by on a gravel bike? Well, to answer these questions, I wrote a basic program in the numerical computation software MATLAB to try and sort it all out. Now this discussion is based entirely on comparing the Shimano GRX one by system with an 1142 cassette and a 40 tooth chain ring against the Shimano GRX 2x system with an 1134 cassette and a 4630 crank set. So these results are specific to these two systems, which are commonly specced on bikes, but the code can really be modified to compare any drivetrain systems. So the first thing to look at is the gear ratios themselves. This code defines the cassettes and the chain rings and then computes the gear ratios as the number of gears on the front chain ring divided by the number of gears on the rear cog. The blue data points represent the 22 gear ratios on a 2 by system, and the magenta data points represent the 11 ratios on a 1 by system. Now, some things to note right away, the overall range of the 2 by system is slightly larger than on the 1 by primarily on the top end, where the largest gear ratio on the 1 by system is 3.6 versus 4.2 for the 2 by system. You can see, though, that the biggest ratio on the 1 by is still bigger than the second largest on the 2 by so you're not even losing out on one full gear at the top end. What it boils down to is this. On the one by system, in your biggest gear, you'll be going 25.6 miles an hour at 90 RPM, and on a two by system, you'll top out at 29.4 miles per hour at the same cadence. Now on the lower end, there's a much smaller difference in the one by versus a two by. The smallest ratio you get on the one by system is 0.95, whereas you'll get a slightly easier smallest gear ratio on the two by at 0.88. The main point of this plot though, primarily to show the overall range of gears you get on the 1x versus a 2x system. Now before we jump into the actual jumps between the gears, you should also note that while the 2x system technically has 22 gears, there's a lot of overlap between the big ring and the small ring. Now you've probably heard this before, but this plot here shows the exact nature of that overlap. What you're seeing here is every gear ratio on the 2 by system in ascending order. So, on the small ring, the first five gears up the cassette, starting at the big cog, represent the five smallest gear ratios. Then, the big ring and the biggest cog on the cassette represents the next largest ratio. Then, back to the small ring and the sixth cog would represent the next largest ratio, and so on. Now, this plot isn't meant to be used as a practical means for how to shift a bike to get perfectly ascending gear ratios. In fact, riding in the big chain ring and the big cog on the cassette is just a bad idea altogether. The chain line will be massively skewed and you'll be cross-chaining in the worst possible way. Usually what ends up happening is that the rider will prefer a chain ring and only switch out of that ring when they need additional gears. So you generally either spend most of your time in the small ring and only jump into the big ring when you need to go faster, or you spend a lot of time in the big ring and only drop down into the small ring when you need to climb. Now, no matter how you look at it, there's no way you're using every one of these gears in ascending or descending order. That would just be insane. What this plot really shows is the amount of overlap that occurs in the 2x system. 
For instance, there are two gear combinations that yield the exact same gear ratio. Small ring in the ninth cog and big ring in the fifth cog both produce exactly a gear ratio of two. Then there are several other cases where the difference is marginal. For instance here, 2.706 versus 2.727 could basically be considered the same gear. So overall, depending on where you draw the line for redundancy, you can see that the 2x system really only has about 16 or 17 unique gears. So that brings me to the real question. Are the jumps between gears on an 11-speed 1x system that much larger than an equivalent spread of gear ratios spread over 16 or 17 gears? Well, I figured, why not just compute all of the jumps between gears to see for myself? And when I did that, I found some very interesting things. First, and this one isn't too surprising if you stop to think about it for a minute, but for the 2x system, the gaps between the 11 gears available when in the small chain ring are the same as when you're in the big chain ring, just scaled by the ratio of front chain rings. What this means is that the percentage jump between the 11 gears of the 2x cassette are the same whether you're in the big ring or the small ring. And for that reason, I'm only showing one set of data for the jumps between gears on the 2x system over here on the right side. That's these blue squares here. Then, perhaps more surprising was the following. On the 1x system, the 5 jumps between the 6 smallest cogs, or 6 fastest gears, were identical to those on the 2x system. Now that is very interesting. What Shimano did to try and match the spread of gears on the 2x system then was to increase the jumps between the gears on the bigger cogs, in other words, in the climbing gears. You can see here, on the six bigger cogs, the jumps between the gears are on average 5-8% to 8 higher than on the 2x system. So I got to thinking about why Shimano engineered it this way, and it kind of makes sense if you think about it. The place when you really want small jumps between gears is usually going to be when you're going fast and you're trying to maintain that speed by finding your preferred cadence to optimize your power output. Now this can only really happen if the jumps between the gears are relatively small. What this graph here shows is that when you're in the six smallest cogs on your cassette, which is likely the case when you're going fast, you won't notice a difference on a 1x versus a 2x system. I think the idea is that larger jumps between the gears wouldn't matter as much when you're climbing a hill. So the bigger jumps between the gears on a 1x system were relegated to the bigger end of the cassette. Looking at it another way, on this left hand plot over here, you can see that the job of the 1x system, ideally speaking, is to bridge the gap between the two blue lines, which represent the big ring and the small ring on a 2x system. What you can see is that it does a pretty good job of doing so, but to the previous point, you can see that a lot of that ground is made up in the six biggest cogs, as this line is much steeper in this range. Then when the cogs get smaller, the magenta plot just about parallels the blue plot, which indicates similar jumps between the gears. So what does all this mean for you and your decision to go 1x or 2x on your gravel bike? Well, to summarize, 1x systems have several advantages, including simpler design, lighter weight, and potentially they can free up space for wider tires. The only apparent drawback is that you'll lose some of the fine spacing between gears in order to cover the same range as a 2x system, or as close to it as possible. Now what I've demonstrated here is that those increased jumps between gears are actually not evenly spaced across the cassette. Rather, the bigger jumps between gears occur across the bigger cogs on the cassette, and they only really affect the lower climbing gears where, presumably, the jumps between gears don't matter as much. Now, I myself ultimately decided to go 2x on my gravel bike for fear of losing out on those fine gear increments. But that was before I ever dove this deep into gear ratios, and quite frankly, I'm now starting to think that maybe I could have gone one by and been fine. Well, did I answer the question of which system is better for gravel bikes? No. Did I simplify your decision on which system you might prefer? Doubtful. Did I totally geek out and write some MATLAB code to sort out gear ratios for gravel bikes? Yes, yes I did. And well, it looks like you're still here with me, so that's, that's just on you. In any case, whatever this was, 
I hope you enjoyed it and perhaps gained a little bit more insight into the never ending debate between one by and two by systems for gravel bikes. Thanks for sticking around and I'll see you next time.